because uh, you know medical services are available there. And yes. I know at least for a while there was some partial support in in some mitigation for what had happened at Bikini Atoll. Yeah, they have unfortunately quite a very high incidence of cancer. Yeah. Um, directly related to the to, yeah, yeah to what happened. Yeah. So a sad history and one that does have. Um, repercussions to this day oh absolutely we go around destroying habitats and places without doing, no, even understanding their long-term impacts and even if and not even considering the long-term impacts even if we are aware of it a little yeah. bit we're good here absolutely thank yeah. you thank I mean, you I so th much i think at the time it, it was a new new technology you know nuclear just nuclear technology, so maybe there wasn't realization it would have this far-reaching effects, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we tend to goes, just, oh, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Um, yeah, just goes to speak by like, you know, intention may not always be where, you know, where your intention is placed may not actually be what is um, happening. So you can actually have, you know, good intentions and still cause massive harm yes um, and I think Absolutely. that's really important yeah. when we're you know doing these new discoveries or and new uh, trials and, and science and um, new technologies that we're testing um, to definitely think of the impact that it will have um, and I yeah. think that's something that we do more nowadays uh, yeah. But be yeah. extra cautious. Be yeah. Extra yeah, absolutely. Cautious. Yes. absolutely. Yeah. Extra cautious and also in line to what you just said around that um, I, I feel in various levels, it doesn't have to be the level of a nation, but on a personal level, small uh, community level, even on larger levels, and I'm seeing this from, uh, you know, working and running and um, being involved in animal rescues and working closely with people and noticing that our, our general behavior that we tend to look just at the short term goals and I think even if we don't understand the impacts of nuclear bombs and 100 years down the line sometimes just to achieve the short term goals we don't try to look at mm -hmm. the long term impacts right. or we are just concerned about what uh, individual small com communities or whoever is concerned what we are gaining out of it at that moment right. I think and that escalates and causes problems at various levels yeah. socio-politically if, if it's like even you're trying to work in a small area and protect something, save something, or it's a larger thing. I think it's a general mm. human tendency that we love to live in a bubble and think that, oh, it's not going to affect me, so it's fine, or right. it's not going to be that critical. But I think we have to be more mindful about learning the long-term impacts of our actions before executing them. Right, and like not thinking there's easy solutions exactly. like sometimes it's like oh well we'll, we'll just re exactly. replant it or regrow it or we'll just exactly. compensate people monetarily yes. but really you can't you compensate for the no. loss of some of these like people being displaced absolutely. from their you know you cannot places they've absolutely. lived and you that's cannot. why what we're doing here is so important documenting what lives in this yeah. uh, in Papahana in uh, in order to protect it we need to know what is here um, so we can do our best to make sure that you know this life is protected and uh, it's very rare life that's been here for a very very long time it's you know yeah. a historical record of, of life um, yeah. from which all life came the realm of Poe um, yeah so I think yeah, it's really important right that we're here documenting right. these these uh, corals and sponges and even the anthropogenic impacts that we right. are seeing here yeah and we go about and we should we should always think that it's not just us who are affected and monetary compensations can never really uh, compensate for the multifaceted loss of people and the environment and the habitats and the ecosystem as a whole. And I have very strong feelings about bombings and military. Yeah. Like I'm grateful for the freedom that we have and everything, but at the same time, like, I like to call it military ignorance, mm -hmm. being that they like to go to different places to try these things. Yes. On Big Island, we have yeah. Pokuloa on top of Mauna Kea. And it's where they bomb the land on the bottom of Mauna Loa. And there's so much land that they get to use to just 
kind of do what they want exactly. and try out different things or, you know, going to the Marshall Islands and doing it. And it's like... Yeah, but it's not just there, mate. It's uh, Santa Cruz continues to be a live fire. Half of Nevada, the Hanford site in Washington is... Um, got hundreds and hundreds of square miles of uh, contaminated yes. land where things yes. are buried. Oak Ridge, Tennessee has uh, underground uh, tanks that are, uh, yeah, have taken yes. decades, decades and millions and millions of dollars to even attempt to clean up. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we don't uh, really Pit have a... In Idaho, it's, it's not limited to know a few islands in the Pacific That's yeah it's all over the world and every nation has done it it's like every nation major nations have done yeah, it good for 20 on their yeah. land and other people's land and we don't have Talking a on me. history to be really proud of and the problem I think is that for ages we have glorified it is and I think it's important to acknowledge what has happened has happened but also the truth of it and not glorify such actions and I did come back it's a bit there. I'm I know a lot of people will not be happy with me saying it, but yeah. And coming back to this beautiful place, and we also just now passed another uh, small patch of really high diversity of corals, crinoids, some brisinges, and again we have the polyopogon elephant ear sponge. I want to read a little okay, bit more about them to know if they're always associated with the crinoids because if it's a, if this is some kind of an obligatory association or just a chance association that we are seeing. It all falls in there while we wait for the boat. Oh, there's some... Do we know what the oh, way is? Yeah. That's Sorry, what I can't get trying it. Trying to right. look at... There's also something at the center, right? Yeah, it's, it's a little organism yeah. on it as well. I think maybe the little organism in the center. Mm. I can't really tell. It could be a po no. I thought it was a polychaete, but it doesn't look it doesn't like look like one. I also thought it's a chitin, but doesn't look like a chitin. Those probably are small. Thika um, struck is the white ones. Can be small. Um, Some hydroids off to the side as yeah. well. What's the common name for Tika Strakas? For the what? Tika Straka. The How'd that happen? No. The Cirripedia. Tika Straka. We were speaking. just talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> and I'm blanking out on this. Barnacles. Yes. Barnacles. Thank you. Barnacles. Yeah, now. sorry. I wasn't picking up on following that. Following the contour. Side hailing here. Your hand movements were helpful, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. The keyword was syrupids for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like this and this. Or like, does it have like a little ring around it or something? I don't like, know. I uh, don't know what the transparent thing is. We're to the waypoint to the north there. Eh? That's fine. It, this is like totally a, a wild guess or wild observation with no deep sea background, but <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like I snails that have really huge there, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. foots, the right? Feet, like, yeah. yeah. Like like the tiny little shell in the middle or something. Can be. That's what I thought initially. Is it a chitin because of the foot? Right. Which is a mollusk also, yeah, yeah. but um, no, it's not here. a chitin. Doesn't look. It can be those. Yeah, uh, you can dial in another one. Yes, yeah. so bots. We'll get uh, Atlanta over Hercules and then we'll try and spin it Yeah, up. it's amazing how much you can see when you zoom in. There's oh just so much more yeah. life to be seen and documented. The closer you look, the more you see. Yeah. We're good on the zoom for this. Uh, okay. We're waiting for the boat, so. Oh, yep. okay. Thank you. Um, 
And we had a, another comment about barnacles earlier about um, they looked like feet. They were describing them as feet. And I did look into barnacles. It's been a while since my invertebrate zoology class, but I did look into barnacles some more. And um, they are basically, um, if you imagine, like shrimps, okay. but on their backs. And then those uh, extensions are like basically their legs with hairs on them that they use to rake particles out of the water. Um, up, uh, yeah, the series, the, we'll and the image that you have up on your screen, that is beautiful. So cool, yeah. So if you want to um, see this image, it's basically um, look up particle Siri, and it's, um, I believe, a winner of one of the Nikon Small World competitions. Oh, so is, that, it like, a, is it like true colors or they, or they have actually changed the colors? I, I feel think, like with yeah. these micro <laughs> microscopy things, they usually change, change the colors. enhance the color, but. Keep coming up until you're in the red there on the delta where we spin around. There's another sea star. Yeah, 23, 25, something like that. If, if we spin while we have that belly, yeah, we'll. We'll uh, put a pigtail in it. And uh, possibly put a pigtail in it. Quick correction: I'm not sure if it's the winner of a Nikon Small World competition, but the photo is by Igor Suwanowitz. I'm sorry, Igor, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, definitely you can learn more about those structures for feeding Nikon online. Nikon Small World. But, um, yeah, Nikon Small World. Basically, it's a competition for macro photography, mac photography. like really macro, like yeah. microscope, <laughs> micro <laughs> photography under a microscope. Yep, yeah, you can take it out. We are seeing some nice crinoids. You know, when you sleep on board small boats and you know sloops and harbors in slips. All you hear all night long is the snap, crackle, and pop of the barnacles Ooh. on the pilings and the and the and the docks. <laughs> yeah, it's a solasterid sea star. Yeah. From noid with ophiroids. Yeah. Also, barnacles uh, Great turn, just grow on whales a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. There's also a lot more brittle star associates I've yes, been noticing yes. here. Yeah, we are suddenly seeing an increase in brittle oh stars. Oh, yeah, because in the beginning, I think, did you make a comment like we haven't really seen yeah. brittle stars on the coral? So, yeah, a lot of change Last, just in this yeah. dive. There's a small goni asteroid on the seafloor as well. A very sponge in the background. It's not even macro photography, it's micro photography. <laughs> it's small, but That's true, it's kind of confusing terminology. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I'll have to look it up later. Maybe you can submit one if you. <laughs> keep I am working not on your photography. Uh, I haven't ever done micro photography and I cannot. I'm not that good. <laughs> you could totally do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've I've done some before, not very yeah. much. Uh, when the I was micro photography. Uh, yeah. Oh, when that's I, great. Yeah. Um, wow, I'd yeah. love to see that. Yeah. Feel I like we're going the wrong I, I way made there. like um an ID guide kind of. So when I was at Duke, I had a invertebrate zoology course, and we, we got turns, to look so. um, at organisms really up close like that, and take photos of them, and we had to make a guide of explaining what all the different parts of the organism wow. were was and. Um, what they the functions of those those parts were, uh, and yeah, I learned a lot about that, and I l love to take photographs of, yeah. of small organisms. Oh, that's it's, that's so cool. Yeah, very beautiful when you look at them up close. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, I often feel like they get a little unnoticed, the small things. The so north. it's very cool to counterclockwise forty five. But not coming around. Uh, let me see here. What's going on? I'm just gonna step out for a bit. I'll be right back. Thank you. Sometimes it gets like if you look down here, the goal is like you know 400 or some ridiculous number. So cycling auto heading well. 
make it happy again. Okay, I'll hold that for a minute. I'll take the other uh, turn out here and we'll deal with the. We don't care about the 6 8. It's the way it wants to go, anyways, right? other before we pull it tight, make sure it's happy. See the tether. Uh, look down and to the left. Just get a quick shot of the tether there, make sure there's no uh, hockles in it. Yeah, back up again. Sticky camera. Okay, that uh, looks good. Good for 20. Whenever you have time, uh, Nav, uh, how far are we from waypoint eight? Also, Mia, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think she heard you. Maybe she has SPL off. Okay. Sorry, did you say something? Oh, yeah. Um, just whenever you have time. I'm not sure if you're busy up there. Oh, yeah. No, I just talked to the bridge, so now's okay. good. Um, I was just checking in to see how far we are from the next waypoint. Let me take a measurement. We are 145 meters away. Awesome. Thank you. So do you think we'll be able to make it during our watch? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Depends on how many flowers are between here and there. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, we can totally do it. We've been bagging waypoints. Oh, yeah. it's, it's what we do now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because I don't get paid unless we get up there. <laughs> I can pick up the pace if you're concerned about making an arbitrary dot on a map. <laughs> I'm not concerned. It's a bit miserable on the side hill here, so... What was that about scientists standing around in a room in front of a <laughs> printout and some darts? <laughs> Random mouse move. Yeah, there's only two waypoints left after the eight, which we're nearing. And so wow. I, th I think the other... Uh, since we're not coming up till 2000, I think I think they'll, they'll get there. Do I think for uh, on bug of this. Yeah, for me, please. <laughs> Mia, zoom out a bit on that map for me. Mm. 
Where's the next waypoint? Oh, nice. So we're going to side hill for the next forever. Yeah, it's not a ridge. It's a side hill there. It looks like a ridge there where the bathy lines are going off on each side, but that's not what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it'll be interesting when I write, well, one of the data loggers, it could be me, uh, writes this dive report to kind of get a full summary of the transitions in the communities we were seeing and also looking at the oxygen, temperature, salinity yeah. as those changes occur. Because uh, we definitely have seen quite a different environment on this watch than right. the yeah, previous. Yeah, in comparison to the other dives, okay. yeah. And also, it, um, okay, is that, what is this? Is yeah. There's a bunch of crinoids clumped yeah, together, or us, I can't tell. A mushroom coral, or yeah. a It looks like a mushroom coral, but yeah. the polyps are very small dense also and dense. dense. Yeah. Lots of primnoids again. We have beautiful brisingers in the background. Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> Hemicorallium. It looks like a mushroom coral, right? No? Yeah, from here it yeah. does. You want a yeah, quick zoom on it? Go ahead, Janet. Push in there. Yeah, that's a mushroom with okay, a good. mushroom recruit that's next to it. Yeah, that's a mushroom. Very dense polyp. Very dense polyp. Very thick base as well. Parent and child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? All right. And what's interesting is that uh, in the other, in the previous sea mouse, especially the last one, we were seeing a gradual change and uh, transition of the diversity in the abundance as we were moving uphill. Uh, whereas here we have seen a transition, but it is not that drastic. It's more uh, of a gradual change and. Uh, and more uh, yes it has been a more gradual change in the community composition and not right under you. as Good drastic check. as we were seeing in the previous seamount where every All couple right. of hundred meters it seemed like a completely yeah. different place with different uh, taxa present there I am glad that we are seeing more living coral on this yes, watch absolutely. compared to absolutely the last yeah. watch also there were dead corals but also living corals i would say that a it's good a good mixture, super good mixture yeah. of both but i'm definitely glad that we're seeing less of the dead yeah. corals and um, sebastian from the other watch mentioned that they um saw an area with like just all sponges like oh, mm, just tons of tons of um dead sponges so oh, dead sponge. yeah it was kind of interesting yeah. as well but thanks for putting together that those dive reports, Taylor Ann. I didn't even know that was another one of the many things you do on the <laughs> Nautilus. So thanks for handling all that data. Yeah, it's a good way to, you know, summarize a 24-hour dive and yeah. just one page report. So wow. scientists can see what species were present and the different geological features and how they transitioned over time. Um, yeah, those wow. dive reports are very helpful. Cool. Okay, let's try 20 again and I'll try and stick to the path here. Okay. You can come down 10. That's also why, well, not why, but waypoints come in handy with the dive reports right. as well. Um, they can give with us reference points as well. Yeah. 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 So. 
uh, makes it more cohesive of a, of a story and the narrative of the dive. Yeah, wow. Well. What's that? That's like a whole other layer. You have the biological data, geological data, water um, parameter data, and then each of those has like a location associated with it. Yeah. So, wow. Is, uh crossing another battle panties and a uh, primnoid with uh, lots of uh, ophiroids and a sea star at the base of it. Are those yellow things crinoids? All crinoids? Crinoid party? <laughs> Is there a squishy thing on the left? Or left. There's a batty batty. Oh, okay. There's a sea star tumbling down. I saw that. I've seen that a few times. Or the, the more the skinny yeah. sea stars just kind of fall down. Yeah, that's something that I've seen on a couple of uh, expeditions, actually. Really? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, um, but mm. definitely have uh, witnessed a lot of ophiroids jumping off <laughs> of, of corals. <laughs> corals, uh, and, yeah, just and then they just way. float down to yeah. whatever's below them. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can sense something that makes them, you know, want to abandon the the coral right. from the ROV, maybe. The ROV. But yeah, um, yeah very interesting. I've seen it quite a bit. Wow. Yeah, that's another type of observation too, like behavioral stuff. Yeah, those are the more rare observations, but um, very interesting. Yeah. We have uh, five meters left. Roger. A small body asteroid on the Roger, rock surface. 20. Roger. the cookie cutter stars. Another one of the black corals. Crinoids. The crinoids are on top of something. Probably a sponge. Did you say cookie cutter star? Yeah, that's a that's a common name. Is it 18 minutes to cookie hour? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Well, See? only if you bring me a cookie. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they're not all gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the um, in shallow waters, there's also another sea star known as the chocolate chip. Yeah. Cookie sea star, I think. Yeah, or maybe it's also just a ravioli chips. star. Really? I actually did have a, I set up a saltwater, a very small saltwater tank mm -hmm. during COVID, and I had a chocolate chip sea star. Wow. But they actually don't do well in, oh. uh, I learned they don't do well in, in uh, tanks. 
Mm. I also started a saltwater tank during COVID. <laughs> I have uh, currently have a one maroon clownfish. Wow. Um, I, I did have another clownfish, but I think for like three years before he passed on. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think my starfish uh, ate the other clownfish, the male clownfish. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought the clownfish were the more savage creatures, but I guess <laughs> sea stars can be too. Sea stars are predatory <laughs> sea stars, man. That's a beautiful bathy bathy, some more darker red yeah. color variation with two squat lobsters and a crinoid. And we have a bunch of crinoids and ophuroids on the primnoid, which is on the left. Uh, Zoanthid scoring on the stalk of something which also has a s has sponges on it. That's a big batty patties. That's a very tall batty patties. And the pink of the squat lobsters are... So bright. Right? Yeah, yeah, bright contrast to the darker red of the black coral. Is that another one of those four sponges over there? I am not I can't sure, tell. yeah. Given that the stalk extends after yeah, it, it kind maybe. of... maybe. It's a different type of mm -hmm. sponge or... Sponge overgrowing a stock, finally. Yeah. Some zoanthids. It's covered it's with zoanthids. It's interesting that we see these two different colorations of, the, or honestly, probably more like three or four colorations of these bathypathies. Yeah, probably different species. You're just looking at them. Oh, there we go. That's squat lobster monthly right oh, there. Wow. Oh, that's, that's a good. beautiful yeah, shot. Yeah, that's a great picture. Wow. For those at home, Hans just took a great still photo <laughs> in the still can. And, and there isn't a squat lobster monthly, so <laughs> I don't need to you could start it. Spread rumors with Upasha. Upasha. <laughs> Hans, I've been editing all your photos. You've been doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're taking a lot, though. <laughs> Make her work for it. Hans. Work for it. Hey, okay. I said I would do it. <laughs> I'm probably taking I volunteered, way more. and then I looked at how many <laughs> photos there were. <laughs> yeah. Is it a small style asteroid on the ledge? Can we? Is it possible to zoom in on the tiny thing, yeah. or are we <laughs> moving? Yeah, the ship's just finishing its moving now, so. <laughs> There's another one of those skinny starfish that Thank you. tumbled down. Oh, I missed it. I slept in today, so I my usual pre ship snacks. Um, for our viewer who is asking about what is cookie hour, that's not <laughs> anything scientific. Um, that's just a, a tradition on the EV Nautilus where at 3 p.m. every day, some cookies or some kind of sweet pastries get um, served. Okay. Uh, so unfortunately, on the 12 to 4 watch, uh, the cookies can sometimes be sparse by the end of <laughs> the watch. So. It's a predation event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where were the scavengers at yeah. the end? <laughs> that looks like a tiny bamboo coral skeleton with some stoloniferent zoanthids overgrowing it. Uh, not a stylized turret. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't see any notes on that one. There's like a black uh, one there. I think I saw. Or maybe I, I was mistaken. It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> Very small coral and piece. And there were uh, some live tissues on this end, mm -hmm. but on the other end, the lighter pink where something overgrowing those. Oh, it's a fish. Fish. Another of the polyapogon sponges.
We haven't seen any sea cucumbers on this watch yet. No. No. Last night, I think we saw four at least. Sea we saw that one with the really purple, pretty yeah, purple, white and purple, right? yeah. and a pink uh, cyanolactid, and I think we saw. Oh yeah, that, that pink spiky spiky one. Spiky extensions, <laughs> and we saw them again, similar ones again. So there were four yeah, at least. Interesting. But we haven't seen any. There's a sea star hanging there, crinoid, cup corals on the rock surface. That's interesting uh, geologic structure as well, mm -hmm. the way it's formed. It's probably a small bolosoma sponge on the right, with the crinoid on its stalk. Another batty batties maybe. There's a Chrysoborgia. Yeah, it really is like a dramatic rock formation, kind of. Mm -hmm. We have some more stuff on the underside, right? Chrysogorgias, crinoids so far. The view from Atlanta is also mm. quite informative of where we are and the structure we are seeing. Yeah. the gasp just now was because our wonderful team member Elsa um, just grabbed us all cookies. We're not going to eat them now because we don't want to get crumbs in our wonderful control van mini NASA deployment station, but um, <laughs> they will be waiting for us. So thank you, Elsa. The real MVP. Thanks, Elsa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear us. We'll have to say thank you later. Oh, she's uh, <laughs> doing a trip to shore. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna have to make another trip, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob also brought three for the front row, and I just ate all three of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to share, y'all. <laughs> no, he's totally joking. He doesn't even eat chocolate. Jacob doesn't like chocolate. For, for everybody in the front row. He gave me one, Dan. He's just lying. <laughs> he set them in front of me. What does he expect? I did. We need to delegate somebody to keep cookies inside <laughs> for us. Yeah, cookie today, watch. So. Yeah. <laughs> cookie watch. It's the small things that, you know, I'm you look forward to. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fun stuff, right? It's a nice primnoid fan. Lots of opioids, a hemicoral. Chip bread if you want. Fine. Uh, good for another 20. There's a small urchin on the rock. I don't oh, know about you all oh in yeah. the back oh row, yeah. but my world is Kinda much pinkish. more round now. Yeah. Yeah, so is my belly. <laughs> Put those over there because I'll sit there and eat them.
Uh, the van eating rules have to do with uh, croissants and powdered sugar and you know crumbly oh. stuff like that. But. Yeah. There's a chrysogorgid, hemicorallium, crinoid. And the batty batties with the pink trailing thing. What's on it there? Yeah, there's a pink thing trailing on the... like just barely <laughs> attached. No, yeah. is it a crinoid? I think it is a crinoid, yeah. Is this is closed Ooh. arms. Yeah. Right, ready to it's very abandon, fine abandon in comparison ship. to the others we've yeah. seen as well. Um, and what was the ID for this black coral here? Batty Batty. This one, the front in the front. Oh yeah, we're seeing, a, what is that, a staropathies in the, the back? back? Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, the staropathies, leopathies, confusion one. Do you want zooms on those? Uh, can we have a zoom on the batty patches, which is in front with the trailing crinoid? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to turn on a light, too. Yeah, it's a crinoid. Just you missed that squat it. lobster off to the side. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. There's a cup coral. Oh, yeah, there's squat lobster on the left, right. But I am here. There's that. a sea star at the base of the black coral. Yeah, it's the largest black coral we've seen, no? Yeah, that's quite large. This is quite big. Tall. Oh, that's all few, right? Not a sea star. Wow, it's very bushy. Mm -hmm. The crinoid kind of reminds me of a moth antennae. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are hawk moths. Mm, yeah. Is that um the thing on the bottom that's white that looks like almost a uh, a pen old timey yeah. pen tip? Is that a barnacle? Yeah, yeah. that looks okay. like a barnacle. Okay. Oh. Are, are those called like gooseneck barnacles? Yeah, the stocked barnacles. Yeah, yeah probably they are the goose. Yeah, I'm not sure what the common name is, but. Thank you. Yeah, Roger, we're good at as soon as I get this chocolate off the joystick. <laughs> Don't those barnacles have like a trap door? Like a like a door, the, the legs come out and the door opens and then the, the legs go in and then the door snaps. Yeah, it's shut. like a top shell. Like, like a top shell? shell. Yeah. yeah, that was the snap, crackle, pop. Oh. On you know, on the dock, oh, and yeah. God forbid it was on the hull, because I was supposed to scrape those off. Oh. <laughs> they can be kind of sharp, too. Very, very sharp. Yeah. Very sharp. Very sharp. So yeah. many cuts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we didn't let them get on the hull. That's what I did two days before coming to Oahu for the scrub bar boat. Some hull scrubbing? Yeah. My gosh, we were flying after that. It was a Made a big difference, did it? Big difference. All in the prop, too. Really? Yeah. It just sits in the... Our big boat just kind of just sits in the... Um, Hilo Bay, like our port. Yeah. And, you know, every couple months we go do a scrub, and this one was way overdue. Change out the zincs every now and then? Yeah. It's a big 42-foot double hole. Ready. Oh, no kidding. Nice. Sure. We had a 30-foot sloop. Ooh. Years and years ago. Are you, uh, are you full wide there? Is that me? It seems wonky. Uh, thank you. Do you just scrub the barnacles really hard, Jacob? There's, like, no tools or anything um, for you it? We use, uh, like, putty knives. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and they usually come off pretty easy. But um, yeah, it's just hard when they're in like little grooves and like in the, within the prop and everything. It's, some stick more than others, but for the most part, it's not too bad. There's a metallic gorgia for a long time. There was another batty patties on we the right. We use it for an excuse to bring our three prongs because, you know, after scrubbing the boat and everything, a lot of fish like to come up and Ooh. check us out. So 
could be dinner. Waiting for us after. Interesting rock. Yeah, very interesting detail. You're seeing some fade sponges. There's a Chrysogorgia. At what depth are we supposed to get a rock? 15. Roger. More or less. What is those, our those do look interesting if we can get in there, but Man, we're in a bit of a tight spot here. That's right a though. tight spot. We might have an opportunity a little further up. Yeah, we're gonna turn left here and look at the cliff and come up. Yep. Come up a bit there. See if that red line goes away. That's good. Oh, yep. Chase, yep, there. Yeah, happy night. How many meters are we away from the waypoint? Eight meter? We are about 70 meters away. Okay. But that's, you know, yeah. not vertical meters. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, you can turn right a little bit there. We'll see if we can fly up the box canyon here. There's another uh, goniaster in the red sea star at the base of the uh, primnoid sea fan with a bunch of ophiroids. Do you think they just attach to things and eat for their lifespan? Because we've only really seen them, you know. Yeah, uh, not as an attached for the whole lifetime, but definitely for a considerable a part of their lifetime. They can nice just uh, be in the vicinity of one fan or on a fan and gradually eat, consume. Oh, yeah, on the Atalanta. Just a bit more, it's creeping in on you. Yep. Looks like a completely vertical one. Yeah, the Atalanta view looks kind of steep, right? I'm yeah. Is it, Neil, very steep? It is very steep. <laughs> it's basically a wall. Yeah, it looks like exactly a vertical wall wow. with some more features on it but we're still continuing to see coral colonies crinoids uh, some chrysogorgias cup corals nice spot yeah absolutely And just wanted to um, thank some of our new viewers for tuning in uh, from Vietnam, Uruguay, um, Slovenia, Singapore, Norway, Hungary, Guam, the UK, Finland, uh, India, Japan, Canada, and the US. Um, uh, thanks so much for joining. And uh, we are still on this unnamed seamount, um, getting closer to the summit um, we're currently at about 1,585 meters deep, um, and we still have some ways to go, but we're making um, relatively <laughs> good time, I think, for our watch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're getting our reputation. 
Um, we're slowly and gradually making our way. <laughs> yeah. We're close to Kure Atoll in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. Um, and have been collecting some rock samples to determine the origin of the seamount and some biological samples as well. So thanks so much for tuning in and if you have any questions feel free to um, leave them in the chat box and we'll try to get to them as we can. That's so impressive, the number of countries, that you know, the, yeah. the range of people listening and watching. Yeah. That's, that's very impressive. And you know, we had a moment last night after our watch where we were standing outside and I think all of us recognized that that what's going on in this mission is, is really incredible. We look at a lot of diversity underwater, but we have incredible diversity in this van. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we have uh, gender diversity, age diversity, you know, we have old and young, <laughs> older, I'll, I'll claim part of that one, we're old and young. What are you saying there? I didn't uh, mean it that way, Hans. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, with my age and we have, uh, you know, our backgrounds of how we got here, our pathways, our, our economic backgrounds are diverse. Um, cultural backgrounds are our diverse. Our cultural backgrounds are diverse. We have, you know, South Asian and Asian and, and American Chinese and and Caucasian and African American and Pacific Islander and, and Hawaiian and uh, and our own family lineages of course branch out in, in many more mm -hmm. different ways. Um, we have remarkable diversity and yet we're all doing something towards a, a singular goal looking yeah. at the history and the culture and the ecosystem of this special place. So we just had a moment last night to kind of remark on that and you know, I, I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah. Look back to your left a little. And I think this is only a snapshot of really the total um, diversity of the regions right. and countries That's that a, tune in. A little white line. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, okay. we're on a certain time slot, right? Yeah, 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 so it's yeah absolutely. Like like some right people now. are sleeping and, you know, that's, the that's people that market. are active, not on our watch, we don't necessarily know when what? they're tuning in, right. but... Absolutely. They're going to have to come yeah, up a bit so there. Yeah, no. So they're coming, so they're coming up, up in the back. The view from Atlanta is amazing. And no. you can see that there's almost like a line of coral fans going up along that wall. Maybe it's just comparatively a little higher ground than the surrounding, which is allowing them. Yeah. Yes, continue to see the primnoid fans with uh, style asteroid, uh, crinoids, lots of crinoids, the brisingid sea stars, mm -hmm. a smaller sea star which is on the sea floor. We think, yeah, these large fans would be the parastellar primnoids. And there's also a mushroom coral that's coming into view. This ridge is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see the line, right? The the fans mm -hmm. on the Atlanta view? Yeah. That's interesting. I think, oh, there's a sea urchin. That line is, that is slightly higher up than the surrounding, like a narrow ridge. Yep. Oh, that one crime yeah. wave that's moving so much, it's so mesmerizing. I know. It's all so interesting to see them really dislodge from the corals at the base ah. and start swimming. Kind of held for a moment that that's what it's going to do. But we have some Chrysogorgias, uh, another Hemicorallium, the darker red one that's coming up. Resented. Some big Chrysogorgias. Those are the more bushier corals with the thinner and finer polyps. I think we are we're gradually coming into view of another one of those uh, bolosoma, the neon green bolosomas. Um, if you're not too busy, we had a question. Um, a viewer asked, there was 
a lot of crinoids, yet it doesn't look like there's much marine snow or plankton in the water, or does the water just look really clear through um, their screen? If it is clear, why, clear water, why would they be living in an area where there isn't much food to filter? Yeah. Do you have any insights on that? Yes. Uh, so, sorry, I paused to just look at the beautiful place. Yes, so uh, we don't really find plankton at this depth. So it's more, um, and uh, there is definitely enough food in the water column for all of these organisms to survive. So there's a lot of dead and decaying organic matter uh, uh, that is coming in with the um, with the water current, and uh, it looks. I mean, we are com we are used to seeing. Uh, so water in the shallow depths have a higher concentration of uh, marine snow, definitely. It is much lesser here. That makes it look like it's clear, but there's enough for such communities to thrive. Right, because they also have that low metabolism. Yeah. yeah. So, there's a beautiful corner with, it's like all the brisingids are just hanging out there. <laughs> to see what's coming, what's going, and then report to the rest of the colony. <laughs> <laughs> the spotters of the colony. We have another glass sponge, probably a Voltaria, with at least four crinoids perched on top of them. Even in such... Uh, Within Coates Barren areas, we're crossing a bamboo whip. Uh, it is amazing the diversity that we see. You gonna follow this ridge or go down the back side? Oh, well, there's know, a yeah. sea star. The Tony I'll zoom in over here. <coughs> oh, on that, right under that, that bamboo coral, right? whip, yeah. yeah. The ones that remind me of little sugar cookies. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That Voltaire is adorned with uh, crinoids. Yeah. I'm actually seeing a lot less fishes than I would have expected on these dives, not just on this particular sea now. Mm. I don't know if it's just our particular watch and the others have seen lots of fishes, but somehow I was expecting mm. more fishes. We are still pretty deep. Yeah. We do have those uh, deep angler fishes, the the frog fishes, the toad the fishes, chana -cops. Chana -cops, yeah, yeah chana -cops. I love seeing them. Yeah, <laughs> I hope we can see one. Uh, I think we should draw it. Uh, I'll draw it out on our manifestation. Board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> While you're at it, draw some onagas, a paka paka. Uh, Seems a nice bullet. It's gonna be uh, blue water here while I head north on our. Okay. I'm going to come up a little bit when you come under me. Yes, please. And uh, turn. Turn clockwise. Yeah, the right way. Whatever way that is. You get it. Yep. Um, speaking of drawing, we have an art student tuning in, commenting they would like to know what ocean creatures you think could get more love in illustration. So I guess maybe things that yeah. are not as uh, well represented well in media represented, and understood. Absolutely, the not so famous faces of the deep sea. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think all, uh, when it comes to the natural world, organisms, be it marine, deep sea, uh, terrestrial, I think each one of them is so unique and beautiful in their own way that illustrations are always beautiful. And I think yeah. uh, if, this, uh, if the individual who's written that uh, I know that the Smith Ocean Institute, they have the Falco tour ship in one of the recent uh, uh, expeditions and also one of the previous ones, they had an artist, I'm a painter on board and I'm blanking out on his name right mm. now. Uh, I can look that up because I've started following him on Instagram because I'm loving his work <laughs> and I think everybody should check out the amazing paintings that he had done on board wow. and I think illustrations good illust and also from a scientific point of view I always enjoy good illustrations of organisms because photographs uh, and image data are very important but at the same time illustrations have their own place right. because you can incorporate a it's a 2D version where you're incorporating uh, 
a lot of the information that can be sometimes you need probably uh, 10 images all around an organism to get those obviously illustrations are not the actual representations which images are but good illustrations are very important and mm -hmm. I think and very important as a biologist so we now my illustration skills are not that good anymore but like always I prefer you know sketching and making mm -hmm. my own notes on them so that you remember what they are and how they are right. and uh, I think we have moved away from having illustrations of biological organisms in the last 50 years or so, but I hope that it's again, we start having that, at, even if not at the publication level, but as a, as a practice. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think that for each species and tax are good, illustrations are very yeah. important. Yeah, so. like what you were talking about, scientific illustration, yes, but yes. The also just like um, so artistic illustrations. Artistic illustration illustrations, yeah. and also as, tra as training biologists, uh, they I think it, it's always important, it's along with writing down, making rough sketches. They don't have to be beautiful, they just are for our mm. own uh, references. But they help us, like, at least help me and I What's know that, that helps a lot of other biologists mm -hmm. going back to those and, uh, to oh, this is how it looks, so this is how it's supposed to look, or instead of descriptions, yeah, because kind of they can be very objective. Yeah, I think uh, when we were talking earlier about how when you zoom in, you see just so much more life, I think those yeah. organisms would be you know, good uh, yeah. to spotlight for some artistic map. drawings because they are so small. Um, yeah. I think they're working on something up front here. Oh, sorry. Oh, Thanks. Sorry. Mm. Uh, we're just trying to decide where which to go. way to go here. In the oh, Roger. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll return to that in a second, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, I think I want to follow the road. Yeah, I think I want to go up the hill a bit there. That's, I don't know, we could try and go north, but it's, you know, We've been side hilling for a while going on this. Yeah. It seems like we're following all the general bathymetry lines there. So if you zoom out a bit there. So if we keep going on this heading, we're. Yeah, we're following. The ridge. Well, we're, fo we're going along the bathymetry lines, right? And they're not necessarily accurate up and down. It's uh, We've been consistently on a shelf from our left to right. So it's steep to our left. It falls off to our right. Uh, the problem is if we go left and go up the hill, then uh, we'll have to possibly then come back down the hill to get to the next waypoint, mm -hmm. which will also be painful. Yeah. yeah, so is the yellow is uh, deeper or shallower to the left of us? Looks deeper. So we're supposed to be on a ridge right here, right? Yep. We're supposed to be on the top of the ridge. So to get on the top of the ridge, I, we should go that way, I think. Yeah, so if we, that was a pretty cool ridge we were on. That's how I followed it down to the south here, what, you know, 10, 20, 30 meters. Uh, but then to come north, I dropped back off it down on the side of the hill, which has, you know, been kind of miserable. So if we go up the hill to our left, to our west a little bit, we should be on top of the ridge that's showing up in, in your... In theory. In theory. That's what I'm, I'm thinking you're thinking. What are you thinking about? So if we step to the west a little, we come up, acquire the top of the ridge, then we can go back to the north or the 325. Yeah, I think right now, based what I'm seeing on my sonar and what we saw, on the south here, so this south run is where, so we came up the real steep hill here, and then we turned and followed it to the south, and I turned back around, followed it to the north, and then dropped off. So right here, I came way down, if you look at my depth history. So, uh, if you bring your head to the left now, Jacob, you'll be looking. You'll be able to see the... More, so, more southwest? Uh, no, if you look 270. 
or northwest here. You'll be able to physically see the, so we put that red blob perpendicular to yep. Atlanta's heading. This is going to be difficult to try and keep Just side hilling and we keep trying to smash Atlanta up on our left. It's real. Roger. We're just going to climb it and then. Yeah, so I, yeah, that's what I want to do. Roger. I come up the ridge here. Let's do it. On two, ready, break. So I'm going to come back to the south and I'll come under you. And yep. I'll, I'll come up, you know, right here, here. Got you. Meters away from the the wall there. Coming up. Yeah, sorry, Taylor Ann. I was just trying to be a little more cognizant of... Yeah, no need to be sorry. Okay, gotcha. So I think that what we're trying to do is get on top of the ridge, which looks like, you know, that was the idea of the dive plan is to follow the ridge. So we're just we're just off it, you know, 10, 20 meters, something like that. Sounds good. Okay. Something under that, you know, uh, resolution we get from our multi-beam. Great. Small metallic boat here. But that's all just a theory on what we can see, you know, 20, 30 meters away. So there's always a gap between the, what we can see with our instruments and sonars here and, and the, the micro and the macro somewhere in between is where it usually goes off the rails. <coughs> 40 minutes to go in the afternoon watch. That fan had a lot of stuff yeah. on it, yeah. It had a lot of ophiroids and crinoids on it. I think it kind of makes... Um, yeah. I just... Oh. Just um, revisiting your um, suggestion to the Sorry. room. You're saying yeah. I'll have to go downhill at some point? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we're just yeah. uh, juggling operations <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> worries. No, I, don't, I do not. Sorry. Um, I know the other night when we were processing a sample, we saw some really beautiful polychaetes, wow. which... I don't typically like things that have a lot of legs and look like <laughs> bugs, but <laughs> it was very beautiful and like iridescent. Yeah. And I think that, um, yeah, smaller organisms like that that we tend to overlook and pay less attention to could, you know, really be yeah. awesome yeah. creatures to encapsulate in art. Especially, yeah. yeah, when they have just stunning features, something you wouldn't think you'd see in the deep sea. Yeah. So like the barnacles we've been seeing. Yeah. Um, the cup corals are also very beautiful. Um, yeah. Even some of the sponges. The sponges as well. Yeah. yeah. More, more love for the sponges. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of those neon polypogon. Sorry. Neon bolisomas. And that's yeah. a tall bamboo coral whip. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a very tall bamboo coral whip. With some batty batties. Like we like We have. Yeah. This is where I, this is where I turned it, but I, I, I kind of. Oh, it's that little corner with all the percentages. The same place. Yeah, that's uh, definitely helpful. And the artist I was referring to earlier is Carlos Hilla. Uh, I think everybody can look up his work but he has done a lot of uh, deep sea paintings and wow. they're wonderful, they're beautiful paintings. That yeah. was Carlos? Hilla. Hilla, yes. okay. H-I-L-L-E-R, Carlos Hiller. 
And you said that was a part of uh, the Schmidt, Schmidt Ocean Institute? Ocean, yeah. Yeah, they have um, an, an internship program or an uh, artist uh, program. Artist board. Artist at sea. Yeah. Artist at sea, yes. 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 Yeah. Artists yeah. Artists yeah. yeah, I wanted to, we were busy up here. I wanted to say, Look if you right didn't right say it, uh, on the last cruise, they had a, um, I don't remember her name, but she was a really great artist when you guys were talking about oh, okay. drawing. So I think they have a couple of her pieces on the website yeah. okay. and I think the picture of Hercules celebrating its 1,000 dive. Oh, oh that's yeah. by her? I yeah, think I've so. I that. think so. Yeah, that. so um, that is a... Uh, 20 meters to the west. Uh, Roger. That is Ooh. Um, Ooh. Stephanie, so if you want to check out her work. Oh, um, that's not good. Okay, stand by on that move. Her Instagram is Steph, S-T-E-P-H. <laughs> <laughs> look down a little for me. Dot W E I N G E R. So when you tie a knot in your tether, then what do you do? Yeah, I believe on that website they have all of their past artists that have sailed with them and um, the, the art that they've made while on board. And, um, I was looking at it the other day with Val. Very impressive wow. uh, interpretations of, of life and geology and even uh, deep sea trash. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to have to let them work this one out up front too. Hmm. Uh, look down a little for me. That's a good one. going to take a quick break from chat for some um, operational uh, maneuvers. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Yeah, of course. Like a little bit. Stand by, stand by. Slow and easy here. Hama, you got it. That was excellent. So the reason I didn't want you to turn is because I was using your camera to, to watch. And uh, yeah, if you do too many things, it, you really get wrapped around the uh, axle there. You sounded happy, excited. I thought you saw like a giant squid or something. <laughs> the tire tether in a nut. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to see it undone there. Yeah, that was impressive. Uh, was that a, called a wrap in the tether? No, we typically try and avoid that. Yeah. Wow, We're awesome job. Zooming south and north there. And the yeah, sometimes it just happens. Mm -hmm. um, for our viewers who are maybe not... We were definitely out of the box at one point. Yeah. Make that happen able to see um, Two or three times probably. all the camera views. Uh, I think we had a small um, tangle in the tether. So really amazing job by our uh, front row team um, to get
get everything straightened out. Okay, let's try a step to the west, please. Yeah. Bridge nav. Yeah, Rich. You guys were complaining you hadn't seen a fish. There's one right there. Oh, yes, there is. It's one of those uh, Corifanoides that we were seeing um, earlier in the morning. Um, macro Urid. I think it's the first one I've seen that doesn't have a skinny tail. Yeah, or is it? Is it a hake? Wait. Can come down a few meters here. So we're on, we're moving the boat to the west a little just to put Atalanta on the top of that. Thank you. On the top of that ridge, and then we can uh, continue back to the north there towards the waypoint. Sounds good. We have 15 meters these left. Oxygen saturation levels. I wonder if they correspond when we came up off the bottom. Yeah, can we? But why would we? why would they? Some There's a the word for that. Obstructing the water flow that's causing that. Maybe hmm. I have to look more into it. The. I think she's talking, but I can barely hear. Talking and drinking tea. <laughs> um. The oxygen levels change pretty dr dramatically just in the, you know, 300 mil away from the substrate. Yeah, that's it, huh? The way the water flows uh, along the, there's scientific words for all this, but basically the way the water flows along all the, all the rocks and, uh, uh, or, or, you know, right against the walk. Kind of the analogy is maybe in, how an airplane works. Right there. Airflow over the wing. Yeah. And that changes significantly the further away you get from the... Exactly. Yep. There's a white paper on it somewhere. Brian's white paper. And yeah, he wants to study, like, drop sensors everywhere that that can measure, you know, one meter away. He just came onto our porch. <laughs> yeah. I see him on the porch can. Cam. Yeah. Oh, yes. No riders. Wow. I think it's a... City bus, dollar twenty-five. <laughs> hey, Koshna, you're <laughs> very quiet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Favorite Thank pastimes. What he said? Fish herding. Oh, with the <laughs> ROV. Is this Create your own fad. Just staying right there. Yeah, I like swam it towards us almost or something. In that earlier frame, it like zoomed into view, and now it's no. kind of. He's gone uh, ten meters actually. We're we're moving. Oh we right. <laughs> Big eyes. Yeah. That's interesting. A lot of times they shy away, they turn away. We haven't seen many other fish. Maybe this one's lonely. <laughs> yeah, right, he's not too bright. No, just we're not too bright. Just the alley. What's that big thing in there? Yeah. Is there food there? Or is it going to eat me? Yeah, this is that would be the hate I was trying to. Has that like weird whisker on the bottom? Yeah. So it's not weird. No, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. 
It has that interesting feature that looks like a whisker on the bottom. <laughs> and the unique tail that you pointed out. I know, I love the tail. I think there's like a whole world of like tail type, like names oh, for different yeah. tail types, like truncate, lunate, Fork. forked. Yeah. Okay, I'll let him swim out of the uh, image there. It's thinking, it's thinking about it, yeah. It's going off the porch. Oh, nope, nope. Now it's coming back on the got porch. Got a picture, got a picture. I need it in front of the camera. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this is a, a gadiform fish similar to oh, that of the rat tails. One. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I need to get back with the program here. Yep. Um, you ready for another move? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> a fish led us astray there. We we're supposed to be going west or north I or know. south. Thanks for those great images. Yeah. This is looking funny. Just <laughs> the Hercules going across the street. Taxi Java, Java won't stop for me. Billy's gets a little sidetracked once in a while. Oh, yeah. Billy Bunny Make our own West Anderson movie with Hercules. Um, what was that about Hercules? No, it was, we were like at the same depth as Hercules and he was coming like into the view of Antalanta and he's uh. like, it's like a Wes Anderson movie, you know, it's like <laughs> walking across the sc screen. It's just funny. Let's try one another 20 west. See if that puts us up on top or never ever get on top and we have to side hill anyway. Well, I'm hoping it will just at least flatten out a little and we can continue on northwest. Not looking promising. It's looking steep to our west, no matter what we do. So we'd have to come like way up that mountain. I think we just have to suffer. And My pet sitter's notification, but I, it's an app, so I, I'm waiting till our our, this, our watch is over to check on my my pets. Aww. If only our pets could also fit in our cabins <laughs> with us. Fit. <laughs> oh, they cannot. <laughs> I don't think they would enjoy it much. They wouldn't enjoy it. It's my Chloe dog would jump off the boat. Yeah, it's such an enclosed system. It's going to be a torture for them. I think we need a boat cat. Though. Is that a sea star or urchin? It looks like a sea star, but yeah, a lot of legs. Yeah, yeah. this is a sea star. Or arms. <laughs> Sun star. Can we ever send it? Like a more pink looking one. This is it's very uh, bushy anthomastus, a pseudo anthomastus as well. By the. Uh, Chrysogorgid. It's a little pheroid. Roger. I'm hoping it peaks there. It flattens out. Hey, Looks, Posna, can you lift like your mic does. up a little bit? Oh, sorry. Perfect. Is it better? Yep. Thank you. I think I was also speaking very, in a very low voice. We have around 20 minutes left on our watch and then we'll go through another shift change yeah, that looks like a procedure
And for our viewer who asked, what is the lifespan of a sea star? Another viewer, um, Upashana looked that up earlier. Um, someone had the same question. And uh, for shallow water sea stars, it they estimate around 35 years, but we really don't know for these deep sea sea stars. So still learning. And we had another question, what kind of trash is found at the bottom of this area? Um, we found a few uh, remnants of fishing nets, it looked like earlier. Um, so that's just an observation from this area. But you can learn about more marine debris um, in other deep sea ocean areas as well um, online. There's some um, reports of a lot of other um, materials that have made their way to some of the deepest and most remote areas. Isn't the deepest piece of trash ever found a spam can? I or have is that different now? <laughs> I have seen an article about that. Really? Yeah, yeah. can spam. It was during one of the Mariana Trench expeditions in 2017. But as a durable, huh? A spam can. But it's definitely one of the deepest. I'm not sure if that that can be, that may be the deepest. Was it the original or 25 less sodium? <laughs> <laughs> That image exists out. somewhere, <laughs> so there's, it can be found. Roger. We'll watch it for a minute. See ya. Yeah, pretty much. I think this is actually a sea no star, not helping it to shift a, Oh, it is a Briss engine. <laughs> Just kidding. Sea star's other. I want, how does that make that separate from a brittle star? Uh, two separate the body plan here. is different. Uh, okay. Sea stars and brittle stars are different uh, yep. classes. Five. So Brissingids are not uh, brittle yeah, stars. No, so they're sea stars. Peek okay. over that shadow there. No, I'll do that. Let me turn left a little bit. Asteroidia, no. Ophuroidia, Crinoidia, and I'm missing something. Looks like I need to start studying my taxonomy again. <laughs> Phylogenetics. I remember when I first took a course with yeah. phylogenetics, it was Most very overwhelming, uh, but now is very yeah. much proving useful. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Holothuroid, yeah. I forgot the CG. Yeah, 20 West, please. Yeah, I remember like when I uh, first. Uh, put us I in a good position. I right, should put Adelanto over her, and then we can move north. Quick, quest uh, quick uh, answer to your question, Jacob. Uh. Um, I looked it up, and um, the spam cam was 25% less oh, sodium. Oh, oh. It was a perfectly preserved can of spam, um, also known as canned pork, which was found at 4,947 meters in Serena Canyon off the Mariana Islands. Of course, it was off Guam. <laughs> And Take you left that can somewhere, did you? No way. <laughs> you think I would leave a can of spam in the ocean? No way. So the can stayed intact at that depth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you look at the image online, um, this is uh, an article from the Natural History Museum as well. Um, it looks like you can totally still see the, the picture. <laughs> that was that for advertising? I mean, <laughs> maybe we should employ some spam can engineering for another <laughs> ROV, a small ROV. Don't give me ideas. <laughs> Master's thesis, here we go. Spam can. Yeah, it doesn't look like crushed at all. It's amazing, yeah. actually, it's now that you bring well, that up. Yeah. Maybe because it was an intact can that it didn't have the space to crush it. Mm -hmm. It was an empty can in front of Would you still eat it? <laughs> I don't think it will be 25 percent less sodium anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> Spam cans also good for musubi makers. Mm. 
Yeah, when I moved away from Hawaii, I couldn't believe how much spam costed. Because we oh. eat so much spam here. <laughs> I know. What's now your... it's locked up at Milani Walmart. You gotta go through the front to grab it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that and corned beef. What? Canned corned uh, beef, you know, well, delicacies. Walmart's, Vienna sausage. Uh, alarming and locking up all their beef. Same in my hometown. Really? So expensive, man. Yeah. I love corned beef. That's beautiful medallo gorgia in our view with lots of percentages and crinoids. 10 though. meters left. Primnoids and. The one hemichorallium that looks like it's it's not doing that great. We have this thing, this festival called the Spam Jam on Oahu. <laughs> and it's Whoa. a bunch of different. Uh, have you been to one, Hans? Yes. In yeah, it's so awesome. All the different creativity people do with spam. Do you have a favorite way to prepare it? I'm simple, spam corn and rice, and then leftovers tomorrow, just add a can of tomato sauce, then it's spam Ooh. corn and tomato sauce. Jaina, do you also have a favorite? <laughs> well, I'm recipe? vegetarian now, but oh, if I was to go okay. un-vegetarian, I think the spam musubi is one of the first things no, I'd 7 eat. 7-Eleven has vegetarian spam musubis now. Vegetarian spam musubis? Yes, <laughs> promise. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> No, teriyaki spam musubi is the first thing I'd eat if I decided to not be a vegetarian anymore. Mm. Spam musubi, or also called Hawaiian power bar. <laughs> yeah, do you have a favorite way, Hans? After all, after okay. attending the spam uh, Let's try a 325. Grill. What happens. I like the grill. Or whatever to your way point. I remember one diving class, we had Spam S'mores. Whoa. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, graham cracker, you know, Spam, Chocolate. grilled Spam, and like a marshmallow. Oh, OK. That sounds better. I just, yeah. You're just like, you know, <laughs> no. <laughs> for some reason, for a second, I thought that you had also added the marshmallow with the Spam. So that's why I freaked out. But yeah, I get that graham cracker and spam. Wait, so there was or wasn't? Was Marsh marshmallow? Yeah. yeah. There was. There was. Yeah. There was. Yeah. There was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to have that sweet, sweet salty sweet, combination. Sweet, sweet, salty. Yeah. Come on. You gotta <laughs> was there chocolate involved? What are you doing now? Three, two, five? That should be illegal. I don't remember. It was, <laughs> many, it was many years ago. Did it taste good? Of course. Okay. <laughs> I did. Yeah, that's looking good. So Atlantis 325, and you can just see the top of the ridge for the next 20, 40, 60 meters. So we didn't totally uh, mess it up for the next watch. I think we're up following this little local ridge here. For We won't talk about that other tree because there are no sardines on board. So <laughs> sadly. Sadly. Mm -hmm. I think we should be able to, uh, there should be like a menu item, you know, a special food you get to fill out before the expedition. And you have to make for everybody? Um, or they do. make it for you? We, we do uh, Costco runs and get all of our own goodies. Cafe sponge with some uh, crinoids. Oh, those grills haven't been fired up yet. No. It's, well, yeah. They, uh, they'll fire them up on the way back in, or once we get in, usually. Nice. Barbecue day. Dan, would you stock up on bread, peanut butter, and mayonnaise? No. <laughs> There's plenty of that on the boat. 
But I would stock up on lettuce to go with my bread, peanut butter. And <laughs> it's just wrong without lettuce. Mayo and peanut butter. In the yeah. So both of those go well with lettuce, right? You have mayo and salad or lettuce. <laughs> peanut butter on celery. It's kind of like... No, I don't like celery. I blame my mother. She that was her favorite sandwich. And, well, she was pregnant. No, it's just a... You yeah. haven't gave it a nickname? Huh? You haven't gave it a nickname yet? No. A Danwich or something? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at a very beautiful outcrop, which has comparatively higher abundance of primnoid fans in comparison to the uh, areas around it. And again, we are seeing lots of the yellow crinoids, some brisingids. There's also a small hemicorallium and a branched uh, ferret sponge to the left. I think we're good for uh, one more and then we'll... Thanks for bringing it back into the room. <laughs> We were off the rails there. No, the uh, now. Are those little white things also more barnacles, or just we're not sure? It's white. yeah, it's too uh, difficult to ID them from a distance. Some of them are small sea stars; they can be cup corals. Some of them can be barnacles. There's a lot. Like if you zoom in on uh, a little bit, you'll just see there's so much to observe. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. We have two zoom beautiful ahead. small metallogorgia colonies. There's a sea star hanging on a tiny stalk. Aww. On the right, yeah, we have crinoids and ophiroids here, both in the phylum Echinodermata. So we have, uh, yeah, the sea stars, so three from the same phylum but different orders of losses. I feel like losses. we okay. always Go end wait. our dives with some sea stars and mm -hmm. squat lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> They're sending us off. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll get lucky with another octopus. This doesn't look so much like an octopus no. uh, doesn't look habitat. Like an, an yeah. It's not a nice octopus garden. And that was a Metallogorgia uh, melanotrichus because I could see the ophiroid associated with it. So definitely a Metallogorgia, probably Metallogorgia melanotrichus with the Ophiocreus oedipus uh, ophiroids associated with them. There's also some Chrysogorgia. So the Chrysogorgia and the Metallogorgia both belong to the same family of Octocorals, the Chrysogorgia. Day. And they can be identified by the very fine uh, polyp structures. You're suddenly seeing a, mo a higher abundance of Metallogorgias, I have to say. And in the distance, we again have one of the elephant ear spon glass sponges or the poly... forgot the pronunciation. Poly I have to read it. Yeah. It. <laughs> Poly um, but we're getting ready for a watch yes. change right now. So, yep. um, yeah. We're beginning the watch change. And um, thank you, afternoon watch. Thank yeah. you, back row. Thank you, front row, for an excellent job. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in and asking the wonderful questions, keeping the conversation going. It's, it has been a lovely dive and a lovely shift as always and we'll be handing over to the next shift thank you so much yes thank you everyone and for exploring with us thank this you science yeah thank you so much mia um we will be continuing this dive um for another several hours so um, stay tuned in and we're gonna continue going up the summit um making more observations and uh, uh, feel free to keep entering your uh, comments and questions in the chat. Like Upashana said, we really um, 
are glad to hear about all your different ideas and um, curiosities. So thank you for sharing that with us as well. Um, we'll see you on the next time we have a 12 to 4 watch on the next dive. So um, enjoy the rest of this dive and um, malahalo for turning, tuning in. Bye, everyone. I'm handing it off to Jarek. I'll see you on the next watch. Videos on comms, but doing my watch change routine over here. <coughs> Apologies for the lousy exposure. All uh, right. First things first. We're just moving intercom. along this ridge, continuing along. That's the goal. Uh, let's get our audio level set. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, we the um, steep part to the last waypoint. I believe we have probably three hours to go, and I think we're supposed to recover around eight tonight. So that's, um, we'll probably be off bottom a little bit before seven. So we want to try to get to waypoint 10 as best we can. Uh, what's the distance there, uh, Derek? Well, it's a straight line distance of 624 meters. Well, that's not very far. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, waypoint nine, I said, yeah, I think, so there's a saddle um, between waypoint eight and nine, which might be, um, I think, like, a little bit closer to waypoint nine, we'll probably try to stop and get a rock sample. Yeah. Okay. Um, and waypoint 10 could be, I mean, it's a high point, so it could have cool, uh, like, a di different diversity and, uh, and stuff. So we do probably want to try to get there. 
So I'd say let's track a line up to like toward waypoint eight, but no, or waypoint nine, but know that we're going to slow down kind of where that triangle is in the in the isobaths. Yeah, exactly there. Okay. Um, let's just try to get over there, get a rock sample, and then uh, make our way up to waypoint ten. All right. You know, if we if we get there before we're supposed to pull, we there's plenty we can just wander around that little mount there, seam out there. Right. Okay, so our, our sampling priorities are a rock. Rock. And then we'll probably take a... How many Niskins do we have left, Sebastian? We have two. Okay, so um, we'll, I probably think... We, or I, I don't probably think. I think we should probably get one uh, at the top of, at waypoint 10. Because, um, you know, that's the high point on the seamount. So I would... I think that makes sense. Um, so yeah, rock and then a Niskin at the top and then see what else we see. Okay. Hello everyone, can y'all hear me okay? A little quiet. A little quiet. Uh, where are you at? Are you back in your other the seat? You moved back over, yes. okay. Wow, I got you turned way up. Where's your mic? Hello? Oh, you're doing good. Oh, crinoid tumble. Maybe missed it. That's a Brazingid tumble. Brazingid tumble. <laughs> it's a Brazingid forest. I was about to say, I just sat down and looked up, and this is just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So, I'm thinking of doing a bearing a 3, 4, that 5. Cool. Trying There's to so get much us peaks. up to here. Oh. Okay. Okay. That was my spot yeah, on the wall. Is. All right. <laughs> Double I want to start off slow. Cr cr crinoid. See what's like. Yeah, just see what it's like. Tumbleweed. I heard it's kind of I like that. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Does that sound good? <laughs> Knocked each yeah, other off the good. wall. <laughs> like, put it up bright lights. Bridge now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you trying to catch up? Can we please track a line bearing three, four, five, five at five, zero point five, two knots? That's cool looking. Thank you. It's like when you do those dives, Mike, to where your initial descent is like to 100 or 110 feet from the surface and you're just free falling the whole way down. Love those. Three, four, five. Uh, Soya is docked with the space station and your colleague is aboard. Yeah, awesome. It's a, uh, <laughs> meet, meet yourself for a sec. Unplug it and just from here, just like string it out and it'll, it'll unwind itself. Like a phone cord. <laughs> My side jumped so low. Yeah, there you go. Check. Much better. We used to have um, just the headsets were part of the station and we just switched them out because COVID wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I don't think these things got unplugged for six months. <laughs> they just stayed Whoa. there. They got yeah. destroyed, though. Yeah, they did. They got destroyed. To, when you didn't have your own, yeah, I yeah. was. We were going through six to ten a leg. Oh wow, yeah. And they're ridiculously expensive. Like I didn't realize that you guys even had, had backups. Yeah, we were replacing them all the time. Oh, I have Argus in the still cam. That's cool. Uh, I mean, really, all down. the way back in uh, Honolulu? Yeah, right. <laughs> Malia, how'd the video go? I feel like I can't hear you that well. Are you muted still? Do you have a headset on? There we go. How's that? Can you oh, hear me better? Hear a little bit yeah. better, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the video went great. Um, I have a technical issue. Yeah, what's um, going on? It's not letting me take any screenshots. Yeah, I'll be right there. Video's gone off comms for a sec. Okay. Yeah. So for our viewers, um, Malia and I just came back in. We were recording a video that will be coming out soon on the Nautilus social media. Do you want to share a little bit about it, Malia? Sure. So 
For a lot of people, the name Papa Hanau Mokoakea can be a bit intimidating. So we're just giving a little tutorial um, on how to properly pronounce the name, um, its meaning, and um, a little bit of context about Papa Hanau Mokoakea and, it, and its um, significance to Kanaka Oivi, to the Native Hawaiian people of Hawaii. So, yeah, look for it. If you're interested in learning how to pronounce this beautiful name, then uh, check it out on our social media. Yeah, and speaking of videos, we actually have um, two that just came out um, recently. One is uh, titled The Shared Voyage of Ocean Exploration. That is really amazing. And if you watch it, you'll see Malia, you also see Kakui, um, and 14 uh, total Kanako Ivi or Native Hawaiians that are represented uh, within um, the so that one's out if you want to search on the Nautilus site. And then we also have a video that um, is kind of a highlight of all the exploration that we did on the Battle of Midway shipwrecks. That kind of just puts everything together. Um, and there's another blog post too that you can check out if you're interested in learning more about that. Yeah, this, um, these expeditions are really a collaborative process of mm -hmm. many, many partners working together. Um, in Hawaii, we call that a kako thing. You know, everybody has their different expertise and areas of, of help and kokua. And I think that's what makes these um, expeditions so robust yeah. in their objectives and their um, the way that it's done is that, that teamwork. Mm -hmm. So this looks like a local peak and then... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Are we able to get that resolved data? Okay. Sebastian, is that working now? Not. Not quite yet. Taylor's going to go find Matt. Okay. Uh, no worries. It's my tri state room 75. Hmm. Look at that. Just uh, an example of our teamwork and how we all work together. Um, let's make sure the right stuff's routed there. Can imagine what it changed. Guess you tell. Cap one. Our visas. Cap two. Sledges. No shockers there. Can you reset the yep. DDL and HMS? Yeah, Are you at the end of your tether? Just about, yeah. Do you want me to speed up the ship? A little bit? If we're going to be going over this kind of bluish water, yeah, maybe point three. Okay. Point three. That seemed like a good speed earlier. Bridge nav. Can we maintain this bearing but speed up to 0 0.3 knots, please? Thank you. So we're we're in a little bit of a downhill here. Um, yeah, that was just going to happen. Yeah, because we have this uh, set of rises here, or little saddles. So I'm just speeding up a little bit to try yeah. to get us around it, and then sure. hopefully we'll see some flatter terrain on the saddle. Is our resident geologist in the van? She's here. Yeah, I'm here. Are you guys by any chance 
opening up rock samples around 8 or 9 a.m. this morning? No. Man. Oh, did you hear the, the clinking? That Somebody was yeah, that banging no, they were, on um, that deck. They were uh, chip de-rusting the one of the uh, not the ladder, but the thing on the uh, on the I'm starboard say side. Our overhead. The, 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 yeah. the boom. The That's, boom. Yeah. Oh. I was about to say Val was on watch and I was asleep. Yeah. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. They I were. Was, I was tink, cursing tink, your tink, entire tink. field. Yeah. It was not geology. Yeah. Take that back. Okay. Good. <laughs> we rescinded. <laughs> rescinded. <laughs> When are y'all going to start with the rock saw? Maybe later? Uh, or tomorrow? tomorrow. You're going to have two dives worth to, to cut open. Ooh, yeah. Super excited. Yeah. Oh, there is something there. There's a big uh, coral here. Way off in the distance. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying anything in general. Just, oh, there's a whole bunch of coral down there. Yeah. I'm going to use the counter. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Just because I can. That was fun. I like that. Yeah, that was satisfying. <laughs> you should use that when you're picking different rock. Be like, well, well, there's these options here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the viewers who may, who, who don't know what we were just doing, we have a telestrator now, so it's a screen that we can draw on that the pilots can see. Like if we're directing them to take a sample, rather than being like, no, further to the right, no, further to the left, we can like, we typically just use a, we just draw a circle, and they can uh, zoom in over there, but. There's other things like you can put little dots that have numbers like one, two, three, four, five. So it's kind of fun. Put arrows. Mm -hmm. Like they use in sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's the exact same product. Yeah. Almost every major sporting event uses that same product. That's great. They I, they probably have styluses though. They're drawing. Uh, there's a stylus uh, mounted to the right of the keyboard or oh. right of the monitor. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, that's too much effort to we grab. Just, yeah, yeah, we just do freehand. That doesn't mean you can use it more, though. <laughs> but there's a yes, it does. reason why the company is called Fingerworks. Yeah. If I uh, if I have that uh, stylus in hand, there's going to be a lot of drawing. What's the feature underneath the counter? I can't read that. Bottom? Uh, bottom mark? I'm not sure what that does. Oh, yeah, that's a really good one. Try that. Just like don't land there or land there or uh -oh. push cores from there. Oh, I mean, and the bottom region is nice. kind of a, an avoid or land. Can you not put it up here? No, you can put it up there. Oh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. I like the go here too. Oh yeah, that one's really nice. Very like, watch the go here. So the president of the company uh, came down to where we were building the vans and spent a day or two with me, developing those tools specifically oh, cool. for our use. No, I mean, it's it's super helpful because we would typically just yell at each other, no, over there. Uh, it was maddening. The like, <laughs> next to that other black rock. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it makes things so much easier. I think we've already taken it for granted because we don't have to yell at each other anymore. I think I saw a fish up there. It's out of view now. 